Howdy folks, Dave here with a quick model making tip from Thunder Mesa Studio. Now today's uh, quick tip is for all of you out there who would like to get started with uh, laser cutting your own structures or parts, custom parts for your own builds. And um, there are really three main things that you need to make that happen. Uh, the first and of course most important is a laser cutter. You either need to own one or have access to one. The second and often overlooked is you need to be able to use some sort of design software so you can get you know the ideas out of your head into a computer and then fed to that laser cutter to create the the parts and pieces that you need. Uh, I did a video on designing uh, model structures with Adobe Illustrator uh, for, for laser cutting and I will link to that so you can check that out. But the third thing, and this is the thing I want to talk about today, is materials. Uh, specifically the sheet materials that uh, are commonly used with the laser cutter uh, for model making. Today's video is pretty much going to be um, my favorites, the things that I like to use the most. It's not going to be an exhaustive list, but these are the materials that you will commonly see used in my builds and in my videos, and I will put links to where you can find all of those in the description down below. So all of the sheet materials I'm going to be talking about today are ones, like I said, that are specific to my builds and the videos you see here on my channel, stuff that I use all the time. I tend to prefer uh, wood and, and uh, paper and, and cardboard and things like that to build with. I don't do a lot of building with styrene uh, or plastics or acrylics. There are people that do. A lot of people cut acrylic on, on the laser. It's just not a material that I use very often. Uh, so I'm not really gonna talk about that today. There are other channels out there that would be happy to tell you all about uh, <laughs> where to find acrylic and how to cut it. But today we're going to talk about uh, some different kinds of wood and uh, some fiberboard products and some paper and cardstock, that kind of stuff. My laser cutter is a Flux Beambox Pro. Very nice machine. I'm very happy with it. It's uh, basically uh, a 50 watt CO2 laser. The bed size is about, I can get material in there, about 14 to uh, 22, 23 inches. But generally what I do, I have a little uh, micro mark table saw at home and for the thicker stuff, I cut it into squares of about 12 by 12 inches uh, to work with, just to make it more easy to work with. And I wanna to start today's uh, show and tell with um, one of my least favorite materials to cut. And that is uh, so-called model airplane plywood, birch plywood. And this stuff right here, this is only 1 32nd of an inch thick. You can get it in 1 64th of an inch thick. And you would think that something that's this uh, thin would be pretty easy to cut. But I'm here to tell you it ain't. And that's because of the glues and binders that they put in this stuff. You have to use a very high power setting and a slow speed to be able to cut through this stuff effectively and a lot of times you'll see the pieces come out really charred so that's how i know if someone really knows how to use their laser cutter if they can cut through this stuff and the pieces just don't look you know like little charcoal briquettes so anyway uh the first one some 1 32nd of an inch thick uh birch plywood which i will use where something uh, needs to be really thin but really strong then going from one of my least favorite things to cut to one of my most favorite things to cut, we have some laser board. And I brought a couple of different uh, examples in different thicknesses. Uh, if you've watched my builds, you've seen me use this stuff an awful lot. This is some 1 25,000th of an inch thick laser board. And what it is, this stuff's a little thicker. This is some 1 35,000th of an inch thick laser board. And what this stuff is, is it's very much like MDF, medium density fiber, fiber board, but it has sort of a plasticky um, coating or extra ingredient in there that makes it uh, cut, uh, cut smoothly and really hold fine detail. So this is uh, 
really excellent stuff. I use this mostly for doors and windows and trim pieces and highly detailed little small pieces that need to be very thin, you know, close to a scale inch thick. If I want pieces uh, that are a little thicker and more robust, I will use this uh, one thirty-five thousandth of an inch thick uh, laser board. Great stuff. Love using it and uh, can't keep enough of it around. <laughs> On the subject of laser board, here's another variety. This stuff is uh, called, often called Polyback, which is a brand name. Laser board and Polyback are both brand names for this type of uh, paper material, this, this treated paper material that it's made specifically for cutting on laser cutters. As you can see, I've cut a few things out of this. This is great for small detail parts, uh, signs, um, you know, something where you need some really fine detail also, but needed to be a little bit thinner than the, the brown laser board. Let me see how thick this is. Hold on a second. I just grabbed this stuff this morning without measuring it. So my caliper's on here. Yeah, 15, 15,000. So, you know, one fifteen thousandth of an inch thick. So thin, but very strong. Great stuff to work with. And you can get uh, the laser board and the polyback like this all from the same supplier. And I will, like I said, have a link to that down below. Next up, we have some actual MDF, medium density fiber board. And this stuff is 1 16th of an inch thick. I use this quite often. If you've watched a lot of my structure builds, you'll see I will often make the core of the structure of this, interior walls, because it's strong, doesn't have any grain, cuts relatively easily. And by the way, those of you out in the civilized world that use the metric system, I apologize. I think and speak <laughs> and design in, uh, you know, old fashioned antiquated imperial units. So, you know, and next up we have uh, what I consider the model builder's best friend, uh, some basswood. This stuff is a sixteenth of an inch thick, same as the MDF I just showed you, and this stuff is one eighth of an inch thick. Uh, one thing that's really important to know, and if you do a lot of designing for for the laser for structures and stuff like this, specifically specifically for model building, scale models, and model railroading, you'll get to the point where you can do the um, the translation in your head from okay, this is an eighth of an inch thick in O scale, that's six inches. This is uh, one sixteenth of an inch thick in O scale, that's three inches. So it's really important to be able to keep that in your head. And if you can't, you know, keep a table nearby, or write it down uh, so you can do the conversions quickly. And uh, because it's really important when you're designing things flat that are supposed to fit together three dimensionally, that you remember how thick. <laughs> The walls are, or they won't go together right. So, basswood, of course, is just a dream to work with. Um, it cuts and carves easily. The only problem is that sometimes it does tend to warp. The same is true of the model airplane plywood. And usually, if you're loading into into your laser cutter and you've got a warped piece, you can fix that by putting some some small weights on there just to flatten it out just during the cutting process. Next up, I've got a uh, piece of chipboard, and chipboard is basically just uh, inexpensive cardboard. This is kind of the same stuff that your Cheerios box is made out of, and you can actually use your Cheerios box if you want to for, for model builds. Uh, I tend to use this stuff, I, I keep a stack of it around uh, for figuring things out a lot. It's, it's inexpensive, so you can cut you know, you cut the pieces and see if they all fit together before you move on to the more expensive material. Uh, in model builds, I'll often use it uh, for roofing and stuff like that because it's flexible. Say you want a roof that sags, handy stuff to have around. Uh, this particular variety is 1 32nd of an inch thick and you can get it in different thicknesses. Highly recommend that you have some of this around if you do a lot of cutting and designing for the laser. And speaking of roofing, got some brown construction paper, which is excellent for cutting shingles out of if you want to make some paper shingles for your model. Um, construction paper is good. Um, Canson paper is better. Artists Canson paper because it's acid-free, comes in 
a multitude of different colors, but because of those reasons, a little thicker than this, uh, it's more expensive. So, you know, for a lot of models, I'll just tend to use uh, good old construction paper. It will fade eventually under UV light. This is, you know, the stuff you used in grade school. Um, not acid free, but if you seal it with a uh, like a clear acrylic spray, that really helps um, make it live a lot longer. So, good stuff for uh, roofing, curtains, uh, any kind of thin material. That it's something that you need something thin and paper. That's uh, that's what it is. <laughs> About the thickest material that I like to cut on my laser is some uh, quarter of an inch thick MDF. I've cut quarter inch thick basswood also, um, but uh, MDF is a little bit, a little bit harder to cut. It takes a little bit higher power settings. You got to, you know, go real slow to get a good clean cut. Obviously, I've cut a circle out of this as a, as a base for a model project, um, and that's basically what I'll use it for. Uh, something where I want, you know, a nice firm, solid base, something that won't warp. Uh, nice and strong and with a little weight or heft to it. That's what I use this for. I don't keep a lot of it around, just enough so, you know, if I need it, I have some because it's better to uh, have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And the last material I want to talk about today is my new favorite. And remember at the top I said I, I wasn't crazy about, you know, birch plywood, model airplane plywood, and that's true. But I've recently discovered this stuff. This is basswood plywood and for whatever reason of uh, the binders they use or the fact that it's basswood it is much much easier to cut cleanly in fact it cuts you just need a slightly higher power setting to cut than just with regular basswood this stuff is a sixteenth of an inch thick I use it in structures all the time now it's become my new favorite material to work with uh, for building models it's it's just fantastic. I wish I could find it in other thicknesses. It combines the uh, the cutability of of uh, basswood with the strength of plywood, which is a fantastic combination. So you'll be seeing me build a lot more stuff out of this. And that's it for this uh, little show and tell model making quick tip. Uh, those are the sheet materials that I return to again and again and again for my builds. The stuff I found to be incredibly uh, useful and reliable. Uh, I hope you got some good information out of this. Um, you can always put questions down below. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, uh, put them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer. I do read all of the comments. Even the, even the bad ones, I read them all. Uh, so, you know, put them down below. Or you can join me for the next Thunder Mesa live stream, and where I, we, you know, we chat and I fill questions there. That's usually on the third Wednesday of the month, so keep a lookout for that. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website, including how to visit the studio here in person. Uh, that's on uh, thundermesa.studio. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.